Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for a bench press day, and this top set was, was just tough today. Uh, you know, only ended up doing four reps. I'm like, you know, this is heavy. I'm just going to get right over into my supplemental work, get a good training response of this. And this also tells me that the previous little bit of training I did didn't really work in my favor in terms of the higher volumes did it. Because usually what happens when we're doing our various supplemental work, the effects of it uh, impact us, you know, three to four or five weeks later. It's usually where we see it at. And that kind of that phase didn't do as well, whereas in when I was doing all this heavy incline work, slightly heavier benching, the JM presses, so on, what happened? I was hitting bigger numbers. In fact, I hit 335 for five. I hit 315 for eight. Okay, did both of them a couple different times. So um, this tells me what I'm doing again now, starting last week, kind of on the right, the right track. Um, I'm also making some minor adjustments in my diet. I start might start looking a lot leaner real quick. Um, I've kind of reached a point where I'm like, look, it's getting in this heat. I'm over here trying to force feed enough carbs on really low fat to gain muscle uh, to the point where it's almost making me sick. And I'm, I'm going over to, you know, carbs that, that uh, create extra inflammation, stuff like that. I'm like, look, I need to get my inflammation really good, recovery up. And I can't just keep trying to force feed myself. So I'm like, I'm going to add some healthy fats back in, take out any any bad carbohydrates. Um, not necessarily bad, but, but more refined stuff. Probably not a good idea to do those things, right? It doesn't work in my best interest. Um, at a certain point, especially, you know, if, I, if I'm fighting with recovery, I really need quality nutrition. And with a lot of it, I'm looking at it saying, okay, we really need... At this point, we really need uh, the healthy fats and other stuff. I could really use it in terms of fighting inflammation, uh, just overall recovery, uh, you know, things like that. I, and I think that would be a good thing. The only thing is my calories are going to come down just a little bit as a result because uh, I'm not, I'm not going to force feed myself anymore in this heat. Uh, I just don't think it's worth it. So what will happen is I may lose a little body fat, but I feel like I'll bounce off some old muscle memory from the other stuff I did now that I'm training heavier, uh, keeping the volume a little more moderated. And I think we should see some, some recomposition here um, as recovery kind of catches back up. Um, again, this is just what I predict is going to happen. But that's kind of what I've told people for, for a long time in terms of diet. Really, the best route to go is to either go really low fat and supplement a little bit of a, you know fish oil and stuff, or if you go with higher fat, make it really, really clean fats, uh, very healthy fats. Stick with polyunsaturated, monounsaturated. Don't, don't eat a bunch of saturated fat. That lowers insulin sensitivity. It increases inflammation. Um, and that's not a controversial statement. All right. Um, and, and I've had luck doing some of that in the past, doing it that way. But yeah, um, I just feel like uh, my stomach is going to feel a lot better if I do that. Because it was getting to a point where some of it, where like I said before, a couple times I ended up throwing up and stuff at night. Uh, just because of the amount of, of carbs that I was forcing into my gut. You know, and it's, that's why I switched over to more and more refined carbs. And it's like, mm, it starts re reaching a threshold to where I don't think that that's wise at a certain point, and I'm not feeling 100% from it, not recovering as well. Uh, so what will end up happening, I'll probably drop just a little bit of water weight off of this, so I may, I may look a little leaner um, as a result of it. I might even lose some body fat, because it's just going to be a point where the calories are down just a hair. Um, but that's okay. As long as I can recover and I keep the training moderated again, I think I'm going to rebound some of the little bit of muscle that I feel like I've lost in this heat if I can get my recovery back on point. And I feel like what I'm doing here, every rep is hard, every set counts, right? We're going just a little heavier, really kind of pushing these sets hard. Um, incline though is going up, so this is, this is a good thing because what happened last time? Last time my incline started going back up when I started doing it, my bench started climbing again, okay? And I have to, and that's the thing that's hard to pin down, you know, is it the incliners that the JM presses are carrying over to my, my bench? Um, and that's a little tricky to pin down. I almost feel like the incline may be what's, what's doing it. And if the incline is doing it, then I can go back to adding some skull crushers in. Right, we can go back to doing some skull crushers and other stuff. But I got six reps with 225. What was it just the other day? I was struggling with five with 185. 
got to get used to the movement again. It's a, really, it's about finding that bar path. And notice I paused every one of those. So what I want to do on the incline, and I really got to start emphasizing that on the benching too, is quality pauses. And I can use a little body English on some of these other movements, you know, uh, rowing, power curls, those are different because they're, they're bigger pulling movements. But all the pressing, um, I want every single rep to start counting, right? So the incline benching, I mean, I want that all paused. But, but hitting 225 for six, um, that tells me I'm going back in the right direction. And I think if we see that upward trend there, we'll see, we'll see the bench start coming back. Um, I'm just, I find that I get so much carryover. I don't like incline because it stretches so much. But, you know, here's the other thing to think about that. Is that stretch on the incline, that forced weighted stretch, especially at that pause, is that going to help me with my bar position on the back squat? I think it will. All right, JM presses. I'm wanting to try to get these a hair deeper, so I'm gripping a little wider, a little wider, not quite as close in as my close grip, more of a little bit of a medium grip. Uh, and I want to just hammer these. And I, I look at these and I'm like, look, I really need to load these in a way that I can handle the heaviest weights, you know, through through a respectable range of motion for the tricep. So I feel like maybe that wider grip is probably probably a good idea. Even though I feel a lot of tricep with the closer, I, I feel just as much tricep there, right? So I'm going to do them. I need to really treat them like a big movement. So at this point, my single joint stuff, as you guys can see, is not really, these aren't single joint anymore. It's like this, it gets some big heavy movements in. And power curls, I've done whole videos on power curls. But notice I feel like my arms uh, right now, they look a hair smaller than they did when I was doing all this stuff before. I feel like when I went over to doing just the pump work, um, my arms didn't didn't do as well, did they? It was 15 to 20 rep sets, so single joint movements uh, didn't do a lot, did it? I don't think it did. Although I need to remember to add some some band work. I didn't do any band work today. I just got tired. Wouldn't be a bad idea for the triceps. But let's come back in and, and use these big movements. Put some tension on them. See if they see if they start coming back up, all right. But again, uh, power curls. I like power curls. I feel these in the biceps more than I do the the smaller dumbbell curls, you know. And again, it's probably the eccentric overload on it, right? It's that eccentric overload. And notice when I do these, there's the very specific in how I do it. I'm trying to avoid tearing the bicep, but I still might go back in and add the dumbbell work. All right. Other thing, I feel like I I need a little bit of delt work, all right. I feel like my shoulders could stand to get bigger. So I grabbed some laterals and I said, let's do some sets eight. Let's quit trying to go for 12 and 15 reps. Let's get a little heavier. And I don't care, care if it's a little swinging on it. All right, let's load some tension on the delts. Load a little tension on the delts. And I ended up doing three sets of these. Everything else, I just did two sets. This is a really easy exercise to recover from though. So, you know, come in and get three sets. They were pretty well limit set. Some of this stuff was to failure. Um, people just don't notice. Like the power curls, I couldn't do another rep. Some of the rowing, that was all to failure. I couldn't do another rep. You guys just didn't see it move, so you don't realize I tried to do a rep and the bar didn't move or the dumbbell didn't move. All right, so I'm pretty tired and we're at the end of this vlog. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.